In this video, we're going to discuss Putnam 2014 number A3. And this is an interesting problem. I actually proctored the exam during this year and worked on this problem quite a bit during the contest and found it a little bit frustrating, but eventually through some interesting insights that we can learn about, was able to come to some type of interesting conclusion. So stay tuned to the solution to this problem. Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar. This channel is dedicated to undergraduate theorems and problems for your journey through the undergraduate and to prepare you for their journey beyond. Today we're going to talk about Putnam 2014 number A3. And the problem states that you have a sequence that starts with five halves and satisfies this recurrence right over here, and it asks you to evaluate this infinite product. So the way we're going to go about this is first play around with the first few elements of this sequence just to get a sense of what the sequence looks like before we actually try to compute this infinite product right here. Let's start up with playing with the recurrence here and seeing what values we actually get for a sub k. So first of all, a sub 1 is a sub 0 squared minus 2. So that's 25 over 4 minus, I'll use the same denominator, we get 8 over 4 giving us 17 over 4. And then a2 is this quantity squared minus 2, which is 289 over 16 minus, and I'll use the same denominator, 32 over 16, which works out to uh, 257 over 16. Okay, so if you look at these first three numbers in our sequence, if you look especially at this one, 257 is so close to a power of 2, is 256 plus 1. So we could write this as 256 plus 1 over 16, and we'll get 16 plus 1 over 16. And the reason to even bother doing something like this is really something that we might notice afterward when we see that this is that power of 2 plus 1, and this happens to be a power of 2 plus 1, 2 is 16 plus 1 over 4, and this quantity here is 4 plus 1 over 2. So we're seeing this kind of pattern where here we'll have 4 plus 1 fourth, and this thing here is 2 plus a half. So um, in general, it seems like a sub k might be the quantity 2 to the 2 to the k plus 1 over that. And since we have a sequence definition, what we can do to establish this is try to prove it inductively. We have the base case where k equals 1 being true, uh, so we'll do the inductive step now. Okay, so for the inductive step, we'll suppose that for some k, a sub k is 2 to the 2 to the k plus 1 over 2 to the 2 to the k. And let's look at our recurrence relation. a sub k plus 1 will be the square of this. Minus 2. Okay, so when you square this, you get 2 to the 2 times 2 to the k, which is 2 to the k plus 1 and then plus twice the product of these two, and their product is 1. So we get 2 plus 1 over 2 to the 2 to the k, and this is squared, so we multiply the exponent by 2, or in other words, add 1 to that exponent of the 2 here. Um, and then we subtract 2 from this quantity here. And since these go away, we're left with exactly the type of thing that we want, for the next term in the sequence. So this indeed is a formula for the kth term of the sequence. Now we can use that to try to find that original product that we were trying to work on. Okay, so I've written the general term for a sub k here. Our goal is to figure out what this infinite product right is over here. So let's look at a prototypical term of this. It's going to look like 1 minus 1 over a k, which is um, 1 minus 1 over all of this. Okay, and so one thing we can do now is write this with a common denominator. If we do that, we'll get 2 to the 2 to the k plus 1 over 2 to the 2 to the k, and then we'll have a minus 1 from the contribution of this term here in the middle divided by um, that denominator that we had before. Okay, so... This is a prototypical term in this product, and we're taking the product of all such things. It's really not clear how to deal with this, um, but maybe one place we can start is to try to make this as manageable as possible. 
you know, typically if you have something like an infinite sum or an infinite product, it's nice if there's cancellation between terms. So if you can make these terms look uniform in some way that will make some kind of cancellation possible, then that would help. Um, so let's first clear denominators here by multiplying by 2 to the 2 to the k throughout. And what will happen with that is it will multiply each of these exponents here by 2 um, because we're multiplying by that 2 to the 2 to the k. So I'll do that and then clear this and we'll see what the result is. Okay, so if we do that clearing denominator process, we get something that looks like this right over here. So what I want to do is make a little bit of an observation about this product. So you notice there's a lot of occurrences of 2 to the 2 to the k. So I'm going to let x be 2 to the 2 to the k. Okay, so if we do that, then this expression is because we can pull the 2 to the um, outside here and write this as 2 to the 2 to the k all squared. This expression is x squared minus x plus 1 over x plus 1. Now this doesn't look very uniform, at least at face value. But if we multiply by x plus 1 over x plus 1, and this is x squared plus 1, sorry, um, you notice that the, numer the reason to do this is because the numerator now will be x cubed plus 1. So we have powers of x plus 1 throughout. So if we simplify this, this will become um, x cubed plus 1 on the numerator times the product of these two. So let's write it in this fashion um, to rearrange this thing. So I'm going to erase this writing this down with the 2 to the 2 to the k actually substituted in. Okay, so what's convenient about this product is the way we wrote it, we have all these 2 to the 2 to the k's involved, and we can sort of switch the exponents. Here, we can switch the order of 2 to the k and 2 to have the 2 in here, which gives us a 4, and the 2 to the k outside. Similarly here, we can make this 2 cubed to the 2 to the k, and so this base will be 8. Okay, one thing that's a problem with the way that we've written this is it doesn't seem like the individual pieces, if we were to take the products, would actually like converge, especially the numerator. Um, so what we can do is multiply or divide by the largest thing that we see here, which is 8 to the 2 to the k. If we do that, the numerator will become 1 plus 1 eighth to the 2 to the k. And the denominator would become 1 plus the quantity 1 half to the 2 to the k times the quantity 1 plus 1 fourth to the 2 to the k. Okay, so that is what a prototypical term in this product will look like. And so the interesting piece here is you notice that things kind of look like it's this weird augmentation of three different geometric series looking like things, right? So for example, part of this product is going to have the product of all of the numerators in each of these terms, which is going to look like 1 plus 1 eighth times 1 plus 1 eighth squared um, times 1 plus 1 eighth to the 4 times 1 plus 1 eighth uh, to the 8, etc. Okay, so this same phenomenon will happen with the terms of the denominator, um, where the 1 eighth is replaced with a half and a fourth respectively. So the thing for us to do is to figure out what the product of such a thing looks like, and then we can piece things together to figure out what the product of all of these terms is. If we looked at a partial product of this, let's say, for example, up to this term right over here, notice if you multiply this by the quantity 1 minus 1 eighth, here we'd end up by um, difference of squares with 1 minus 1 over 8 cubed, uh, squared, sorry, and then the product with this would be 1 minus 1 over 8 to the fourth, and then with this we get 1 over 1 minus 8 one, 1 minus 1 over 8 to the 8th, and then 1 minus 1 over 8 to the 16th. So if we took this partial product and multiplied by this quantity here, we would get 1 minus 1 eighth to the 16th. And so this partial product is this quantity divided by 1 over 1 minus 8. Right, and this is true in general. If we take a partial product up to 
the some term where we have an exponent 2 to the k, we get this quantity right over here. And as k goes to infinity, then this quantity will go to 0. And we're left with 1 over 1 minus an eighth as the product of this entire thing. OK, so then if that's the contribution of this numerator in a similar light, the contribution of this denominator in this product is 1 over 1 minus a fourth. And this one is 1 over 1 minus a half. So the entire product overall will be 1 over 1 minus an eighth divided by 1 over 1 minus a fourth times 1 over 1 minus a half. And that works out to 8 sevenths over 4 thirds times 2, which is 3 sevenths. So an interesting way to go about a problem, and I think one of the things that I like about it is the opportunity to play with the sequence and then be able to get an explicit formula for the sequence. And then the rest of this had to do with a lot of algebraic manipulation where we tried to systematically make things look uniform in order to hope for some type of grouping or cancellation that might happen. One thing to be careful of too is we need to make arguments that we actually have convergence here. Um, and you can make different arguments to make that happen. For example, in our partial products, we had convergence because we knew that some base two that was between zero and one to an exponent that is increasing will go to zero. Great, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications on future videos.